Well, this is uh, podcast 20 something for us. Edward's not here, he's the organized one. And today, we've got some really fun guests, some people that are impactful and important in our community and in our lives and go back a long ways. So, we're glad to have Tom Telford and Preston Niederhauser here from Brainstoke. Thanks for coming in, guys. Heck yeah, to be here. It, I didn't. I don't actually know if you're on our podcast, so we're in charge here. You guys yeah. know, like we ask <coughs> the questions. It'll be fun. <laughs> It'll be good. Do we? No. <laughs> tell Can us, we reciprocate we, <laughs> on that note, Spencer? Why yeah. did you start when this company? Start <laughs> what drives no, you? We, we want to start off by thanking our sponsors. Yeah, uh, Tesla, <laughs> Tesla Motors. <laughs> We've got some pretty big sponsors around Admiral here. Beverage. Pay full tail price, yeah. retail price. There's a beautiful one in the park. So I actually was like, oh, cool. You guys have you actually did it. Uh, yeah. We usually record in the Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm waiting for that to get the wrap, the hyperthread wrap. No, it's not mine. That's for sure. Mine seem to be the only ones that get stickers on them. But. All right. Well, it's tell awesome. us a little bit. <clears throat> tell us a little bit about your guys' background. I think the you guys obviously have a much congratulations on 10,000 listens that's a big deal we, we've been podcasting and we're not doing 10,000 listens so you guys have a bigger podcast but tell us about the podcast how it came about and uh and maybe a little bit of our connection in that in that process as well so yeah so 10,000 plays <clears throat> you know we appreciate that but in truth we feel like the reason that we are at that point is the guests for sure, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's been about getting awesome people in. Kevin was in <clears throat> and just letting people tell, you know, their stories. And that has been so rewarding to us. In fact, every time we leave, you know, an episode, we look at each other, like, this is the coolest thing to just let people tell their own stories, you know, and in our society and culture, typically, you know, people get, um, you know, you get sound bites of what's going on or, their accomplishments, but it's really cool to hear people give their own context and then tell their own story instead of just a little bit of context and then, you know, some highlights of their story or whatever. And so it's been cool to let people share that in, in, in its entirety because, you know, again, you, you tend to hear finish line, you know, type knowledge and information that's out there. You don't really get to run up to it. You know, you don't get a lot of the struggle. So <clears throat> having said that, um, you know, in terms of just, you know, the background of the podcast, you know, I am married to a marriage and family therapist, Liza, LMFT, um, Liza Telford, and she's a practicing therapist a few days a week. And as she finished her licensure, we ended up investing in buying a portion of Aspire Network, which is a collection of mental health companies. And... <clears throat> um, as that company has grown and as we've stayed involved with Aspire, funny enough, as, as silly as it sounds, one day I was just on a ride with Preston. We tend to do our therapy in a similar way, which is on a bicycle. And we were out one day and I just said, dude, what is going on in society? You know, and I obviously it's, it's heightened because of living with a therapist and owning a mental health company. But... <clears throat> Um, Preston's brothers, family, his extended family. We have people in our community. We've coached kids for 10 years and, you know, the NICA system. And the question was a genuine one, just like what's going on with, you know, teens and adults, mental health? Why are kids taking their lives at such a young age? And, you know, I basically said to Preston, you know, that just what's going on and, you know, do kids really feel like at a young teenage age, have they had lived enough life to really say, there's nothing attractive to stay on the planet anymore. I see nothing that I want to stick around for, which just guts me, you know, because I really do love life. I, I'm stoked to wake up 5 to 7 a.m. Like, I'm giddy. It's like Christmas for me this morning, and I pressed and rode big mountain together and watching the sunrise and being out there and breathing with a friend and, you know, just seeing the mountains and like, I am, I am stoked on life. I really feel that way. I'm giddy to live it. 
And I know it's hard in, in a number of reasons, but it really was that day on the bike where, where we started chatting about what's going on in our society and what could we do? And the answer was, let's start a company that does somehow, some way, tells people stories of their struggle so that others can learn from it. <clears throat> Instead of ending your life, if you could learn to more proactively, you know, hear other people's stories and to know, you know, how to cope with that, how to cope with the stress. And so, you know, when you look at, you know, Preston's got the hat on, you know, frontwards, mine's on backwards, but the logo really is 5S right? The five S's. And, you know, the five S's are a way of having positive coping. And a few of those really are, you know, sleep, sweat, you know, and um, sun and stoke. And that's for the five. And the other one is sex, but we won't talk about sex today. It's because we will call it touch, right? Human touch. But <clears throat> that was the genesis of starting brain stoke is how do we launch something that starts to address at the teen, at young adult level, but really they're not listening to a lot of podcasts, but their parents are. Yeah. And so it's really getting parents to listen and learn about proactive mental health, knowing that if they learn the knowledge and information, they'll become the coaches in the home, right? Yeah. It's interesting how many kids, children in the mental health world struggle with their mental health and, that's typically because of what's going on at home. Not always. I can't say that, you know, parents are failing at home, but it's an indication. It's a high indication. So I'm not sure if that answers the whole question, it but does. it really was, you know, um, the reason that it makes sense for me to have that dialogue with Preston is because he's been a coach forever. He has children. We spend a lot of time with our kids together, <clears throat> traveling, doing the same similar outside stuff. And, Preston cares as much about other teens as he does his own. And it's an indicative of that because he spends hours and hours volunteering as a coach. Even when his kids aren't on teams, he wants to make a difference in kids' lives. And so when he and I ride together, it's cool because we can talk about wanting to have an impact and it's not just selfish to our own families. Okay. Do you find majors in the base end of football, right? Majors, your other boy? Well, there's there's been a development oh, in our home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he um he has decided to be a bike racer. Oh no way! Yeah, so he's yeah, uh, he's on the he, beam beam <laughs> no, he's on the mountain bike team. So it's really cool. That's awesome. Um, and you know he uh, he caught wind the other day that um you know one of the linemen he was a lineman yeah. uh, for his school and wasn't sure if he was going to play. He's kind kind of he was the smallest Small, lineman on yeah. the team. Um, but he had word, gotten word that you know, that lineman, one lineman had quit, and they were maybe needing a lineman. And I said, "Are you regretting your decision?" And he's like, "Oh no, I love riding. I love racing a bike." He uh, he actually, side note, he uh, jumped in the East Canyon Road Race last weekend as a Cat Five. Oh, nice! <laughs> so, nice. and he loves it. He's all in. So it's it's fun. He's a different he's a different build, but he's he's uh, embracing it and okay. getting after it. So my, my point for asking that was is if you felt like um, you see a lot of these mental health struggles in endurance racers and if that's or if you're just seeing it in all the kids that because you guys have a dynamic group around you right like if it's kids that are playing quote unquote mainstream ball sports are having the same struggles that the kids that are more in our lives because we're at events and we're yeah. and we kind of associate with a lot of cyclists but are you seeing that in all these kids yeah I <coughs> yes a hundred percent. I think due to, you know, the activities we love to do and where we're involved in our community, obviously we see it amongst, um, you know, in the cycling community or in the, you know, the endurance athlete community. But, um, you know, you hear of stories, um, you know, I think you even called us about, you know, some tragedy that happened in, in Southern Utah. You know, I think, I think it's, it's everywhere, unfortunately. And I think every, Every student athlete, every teenager needs to understand that they've got some value. There's value, value, value to them, yeah. you know. And how do we get that message out? And you know, we're doing, we're doing what we can. <coughs> yeah. So, my, I'm glad you brought up the word community. That's really kind of been our goal lately. It seems to be the hottest topic for us is to talk about community from our perspective. Obviously, apparel 
ties a community together, right? And I've used the the analogy a lot. You get on the train, you're going to a jazz game, you got people in Lakers jerseys, jazz jerseys, like you immediately develop a camaraderie with the person next to you who's wearing the same thing. And so we've really kind of tried to take hold of how apparel, branded apparel, ties a community together. Um, and I don't want to crack any eggs, but I do believe that at the in the inception of this idea, I think I knew about it before Kevin, uh, <laughs> that there was an apparel kind of component to it, right? And so I, I'm curious just kind of what your guys' perspective is. Is You know, you have a perspective about building community and building the youth, um, how you've seen through being coaches and being uh, athletes for many years, uh, what branded apparel and what apparel can do for stuff like that. It's huge. <clears throat> we actually listened to your podcast with um, – and your, you know, Armington High coach. And it doesn't surprise me that apparel was one of those components that has unified, you know, those people. And it's not just, you know, the teens and the athletes, but the parents, you know, want the teams, you know, the team swag as much as the kids because they want, <clears throat> they want uh, to be supportive and that's a way to show the support. When we were sitting down and thinking about you know, if we're going to launch Brainstoke and, you know, what are the components? <clears throat> the goal was to try to appeal to teens because they need to learn the mental health tools young. Yep. But we knew that they were likely not going to listen to our podcast. Now, we, you know, we can take 10 seconds of an episode, launch it on TikTok, and within a day it'll be seen thousands of times, you know. And that 10 seconds may talk about positive coping or whatever. You know, but the goal was to try to appeal with teens. And if you start thinking about, you know, go back to 15 years old, you know. So Tom, the 15-year-old, what is Tom going to really listen to? Not his parents very often, but he's going to listen to his friends. He's going to pay attention to music, fads. He's absolutely going to focus on clothing, right, apparel, the look, the hat, Jordans, whatever it is. Apparel is a key component to that. And so... At some point, we hope that Brainstoke continues to grow and we get to the point where we're partnering with HyperThreads and we're creating kits or hoodies or whatever. And that apparel does somehow, some way, an Easter egg, I don't know, but it, it itself is sending a positive message about proactive mental health. Yeah. And so you're spot on. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. That's why I believe teams all have the same kid. And you know, it's age old. If you're on a team, everybody has the same uniform that they wear. And there's a transformation that goes on when people become part of a team. It's interesting. As long as we've been coaching, there are kids who literally will come to practice and hide behind cars, right? They come, they don't want to pedal. They don't want to do the work, but they're stoked to get the kit, <clears throat> right? Yeah, or they're stoked to get, yeah, the t-shirt or the hat or whatever, because when they go to school, they're going to wear it. And it says something about them that they belong. And Preston mentioned this earlier. In the end, we all want to matter, yeah. right? And apparel, even though it is on the outside, it's the beginnings of creating mattership on the inside. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, how do you o under or overstate, you know, what apparel, you know, does in community? Yeah. We, ha we had the opportunity. I know. Shameless plug, I apologize, but we had the opportunity to interview the three coaches at Creek Valley Composite yeah, down in. Not today. Yeah, and I know they they um, wear HyperThreads product, yeah. but you think of what apparel did for the kids on that team. Yeah. Uh, if you have an opportunity to hear that episode, yeah, I listen to that. It, it's pretty amazing and pretty powerful. And there was a lot of a lot of things said off the record too that maybe weren't appropriate to share. Uh, in that forum, but it, it's unreal, and yeah. it's 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 real magic when you dress like somebody else. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And we even we pressed logos on pants today because those kids got to wear pants, and that's the only team that we've worked with that was like, we need these kids got to wear pants. They're wearing jeans, and so we got nice active pants, laser cut holes in them with condors running down both legs. Very cool. So it's, wow. it's interesting for me to be able to, like, I, I have the unique privilege of being able to have lots of those conversations with coaches, and it'd actually be a really fun collaboration at some point because of our shared sponsorship of the Utah League, but there's other teams where we put, like, 
no excuses on the inside of a pocket. Only the kid ever sees that. Uh-huh. Uh, Wes Lake, uh, Tommy's funny with, I, I can't remember the movie, but it's, it's a reference about blood makes the grass grow. You guys might know the reference better than me, not to say that you're <laughs> That one's over my head. <laughs> but he does this chant. We made some <clears throat> funny socks where there was grass and, you know, drips of blood and other things. But we put that messaging on the inside of the pocket. You don't see it on the outside every day when those kids put those jerseys on. We literally printed it inverted so that when you put the jersey on, it says makes the grass grow because that's their team mantra. Mm. So trying to find uh, positive messaging that we can put inside of jerseys. Some of the coaches may not think of it. So it might be a fun collaboration to get a, a list of things that might relate to the five S's where we just hide these things on the inside of the pocket to give these positive affirmations to kids. Because if you put a print underneath the pocket, the only way to see it is when you pull it out of the bag, you unzip it, you're about to put it on, and it says you matter, right? Or yeah. whatever it may be. In that instance in <coughs> in southern Utah where the kid, there was two kids in a weekend that decided this life wasn't for them, and, and we did. We, we put messages hidden, and it's, it's very tricky, right? You, you don't want to celebrate it. You don't want to put their name on it necessarily and say, hey, we remember, because then other kids might think, I want my name on a jersey, and that was the way to <laughs> right. get it. So finding little Easter eggs that we <coughs> put on the inside of jerseys or we put on the sleeves or stuff to really reinforce that we support that same message, that these kids matter and that we're trying to build community and show that they matter and that they're involved in something, even if they're not the fastest or they're not the right build or whatever it may be, that yeah. they're, they're just as important as the you know brother who's, who's the top racer in the state and the other one who's like, I'm just, I'm just the funnest skier around because he's the funnest <laughs> skier I ski with, you know. <laughs> It was too serious. Major was fun to ski with, you know. <laughs> There's so. some truth to that. But anyway, yeah. I'm just kidding. No, that's that's great insight and great ideas. And when not long after Tom and I had that initial bike ride a year ago, um, I I approached you um, and was trying to figure out some ideas. And at the time, we were probably a little ahead of the game, and we were dreaming a little big. But um, you know, hopefully in 2024. You know, apparel becomes a thing for us, and some of those nuggets you just dropped would be great, yeah. great ideas or concepts to and come up to do. And I do. I think it could be simple. You know, we try and do the merch for the high school league, and it's hard. you got to design something that kids are going to think is fun, but that parents are willing to buy, and that's the right style, but you're not – I mean – these kids wear like triple extra large shirts, but how many of them do you really stock on hand? And <laughs> how do you do it? So it's, I just burped. Oops. Um, <coughs> but yeah, it's, it's fun, you know, and I found, we found a lot of success with simple things like hats that we put patches on and it's easy to get sew on tags that are just simple messaging that yeah, are, are one size fits all. Everybody likes the style and works great. I think it's awesome. You know, there's, those are such key years of um, identity, you know, and um, there were several practices, you know, where Preston and I were at practice and, you know, talking to kids. And one of the coolest things over the years is hearing kids talk to each other. And my favorite thing to hear kids on our team say to each other was um, they would all well, ask each other, like, what are you going to do this year? And I love to hear kids say, oh, I race mountain bike. Like when they embrace an identity, yeah. you know, and and apparel is part of that. You know, it's so important. And when you start to see kids like be comfortable wearing, you know, bibs, yeah. you know, I mean, Creek Valley. That I mean, can you imagine that day? <laughs> yeah, it, honestly, <laughs> like some of those nuances. Until I listened to your podcast, I was like, yeah, he he said that, but it didn't click like culture so much. Con whatever the word would be, but contra culture or whatever like it was so strange to then have to like oh okay i get it like we we developed long sleeve shirts but not heavy ones right so it was all just about coverage and things and so yeah i mean to to be able to solve a problem that way and still build community yeah it's such a fun fun place to be at and you guys have such a unique <coughs> opportunity and reach right now to be able to share those stories and communicate with it, that it's inspiring for us to be like, you know, it was like, hey, I, 
I made my kids listen to that with me. Like we were driving to North Fork <laughs> or something. I was like, yeah, these guys, I, I work with this team and I know these guys. So you're listening to the podcast too. Uh, but it was really cool to get the full scope of it. Cause really I'd actually only met Richard um, yeah. over email in a couple of calls. And then in person, he came by the state championship booth. We pressed some shirts for him. That was the first time I'd really met him in person and like didn't dawn on me the full scope of what he was doing for that community and probably still doesn't because we're still just in progress trying to get everything yeah. we can for them, you know? I mean, they're the, they're the kindest three men. And um, the last thing they probably want is a lot of hype. Yeah. But you can tell that they recognize that um, for them to just allow more people to get involved and to know what's going on there, that it benefits the community and the team, you know? And... And so, yeah, it, it's remarkable what they've done. It, I mean, the coolest story. I mean, it's uh, yes, they have started a mountain bike team in Colorado City, but I mean, those guys have changed lives. Yeah. You know, I mean, we said in our podcast, it's like talk about discipleship, right? Like it's yeah. it's on a whole new scale of humanity. So, yeah, that's cool yeah. that you're working with them and supporting them. As uh, league sponsors, what's your does your involvement change as their season starts obviously mine goes from a million to two million. <laughs> not in dollars obviously but <coughs> effort units you know like at the end of the day we we're at every we're at a lot of races um does it change what you guys do as the season starts <laughs> that's a good question we're still trying to you know work through the details exactly how, what makes sense to help Dallin. Right. um I mean, our initial goal was to just interview as many kids that are willing to share their story as possible. Yeah. Um, and it's been fun when we've been able to um, interview these teenagers. You know, uh, Preston Page, we just interviewed. He's 95% blind. blind. Yeah. I loved his, his attitude is unreal, yeah. you know, and he was so fun, and he's poking fun at us and it was it's just <laughs> really great so i mean that's the initial concept is hey we're just trying to share as many stories as we can and make them available to to parents and kids to hear and make sure they all know that hey we're all dealing with stuff right you know whatever that stuff is and um there's ways to deal with it yeah. you know and there's extreme ways and there's easier ways and let's figure out you know what what is the healthiest for for these kids to, to manage and deal with their stuff. You know? It, you know, on one hand, we could have a booth. We could go to all the races, and what would we do, you know? I mean, how many kids want to come up and talk to two middle-aged guys and talk about, you know, <laughs> practical mental health? You'd you know? Surprised. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> so. Depends I, on what you're wearing. <laughs> <laughs> Rad racing. They'd all be like, what is that? Um. Uh, yeah, I mean, in a perfect world, we would go to a number of races, and, but we would we would snag kids and um, ask them a couple of questions and film it and, you know, tell us about the struggle of getting here today. Yeah. You know, how was the race? Was it full of struggle or stoke? You know, I mean, so blips of dialogue, getting short stories would be awesome. Follow up maybe the week after races where, you know, we can have kids in studio and interview them. It, it's a challenge because you would think, well, you want to interview everyone who stands on the top of the podium, right? <laughs> but that's not the goal necessarily. The The goal is to hear all the stories of the struggle. Find you know? a kid running his bike in with a it, broken chain. And amen. The yeah, rest exactly. yeah, totally. Or, you know, 100% chance that with 7,500 athletes that during the season, someone loses a mom, a dad, yeah. someone's, you know, literally themselves are fighting cancer. I was with a kid the other day, you know, he's 12 years old and he's fighting cancer. And so, yeah, I mean, it's kind of an interesting thing to try to put your arms around it, you know, yeah. to, you know, how do you, how do you approach and, and go through the season that way? But we'll definitely elevate the number of interviews we do, you know, for anybody who listens to this, you know, if you have someone you want or a story that needs to, you know, to be heard, you know, refer them. We want to hear that kind of stuff. So, but the flip side, the fun side, if we had like our dream, 
it would be to show up and take over the mics yeah. <laughs> at a race. Sometimes you should. At a race. Uh, and a we don't even know who – I mean, they're great people who do it. But it would just be fun because we've coached for long enough and because of what we're doing now, it would be fun even pre-race to just, you know, the people who are standing in line, you know, the kids waiting in line just, you know, yeah. have a mic and to ask them a couple of questions and film it and, yeah. you know, getting involved that way. The season is an opportunity for us to just brand what we're doing in hopes that the kids hear a little bit, but the parents start to recognize, like, you know, these are people who really want to share the stories. Yeah. Yeah. We have a unique opportunity that, again, might be a fun little collaboration or at least a behind-the-scenes consultation that I could enlist you in. But at the end of the year, we give a HyperThreads Heart Award because it sounds good. Uh, and it's evolved over years, but it's usually highlighting kids who have overcome some sort of struggle throughout the year. And we get tons of notif- uh, nominations for, you know, this person's super dedicated. They come to practice. They really show dedication as heart, you know. Um, and I read just hundreds of those stories. And sometimes it'll be three or four people that nominate a kid. And then you can tell, like, there's something else besides, is like, they're, they have overcome something and therefore they're that dedicated. But it's it's tough for me like I I read probably a hundred stories of kids who are showing a increased heart you know and then we pick one from each region and we just give them some swag and we try and highlight them on a stage but yeah. it's at the end of the state championship there's so much going on yeah it's like how much time do you put into telling all those stories <coughs> we had one I don't know five years ago maybe state championship was in Cedar this kid had like lost his finger got electrocuted in shot class and lots of things you know and it was like the most emotional thing it was it was in st george at snow canyon high school but it was like the most emotional thing and all i had to do was like read a little story and try not to cry and then step out of the way while everybody just cried and you know gave this kid a big hand so it might be nice at the end of the year to try and get your uh feedback and insight and to do something in that swag bag that'll validate these kids because they've obviously most likely were selecting kids who have really overcome some you know, health challenges, major crashes, yep. family setbacks, that kind of stuff. And they've still really taken hold to this sport as a, as a way to get through it. So, yeah. Yeah. I love that idea. Yeah. I, we're in. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I sit here and I'm thinking about, you know, Dallin said something at a, a leadership summit. I think it was a leadership summit where he, he, he said, you go through our entire website or you go through all of our social media, you're never going to see a single picture of anyone standing on a podium and I really appreciated that and you know obviously the undertones of what he's saying is we don't necessarily care about the kids that win you know but we we care about everybody and that fits so much in who Brainstoke is and it's 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 a perfect partnership really because we're so aligned on in so many ways yeah is that partnership uh, this is a self-serving question, but has it opened the doors for other, for the athletic director at Morgan High School to be like, hey, we want you to highlight the kids on the football team, right? Like, has it opened doors beyond the cycling realm? Good question. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, it's it's coming. Um, yeah, I mean, you, in theory, you know, we're not committed to just cycling. We're committed to anyone's mental health, right. you know? And so, <clears throat> yes, there's a lot of stuff that Brainstock could do, you know, and focus on, but if it makes sense, our, our first love is NICA because of it. I mean, a number of reasons, one, because we love the sport, absolutely love the sport. If we had our chance, we would just ride bikes every day and that's all we would do, you know? Um, but there's something super unique about the sport in high school and the values that Nike has, you know, in, in what Utah is doing in particular and who it attracts to it, right? And so you have this dynamic where you've got, you know, 5% of the kids who are out there are hammerheads who are legit, right? Incredibly fast, very strong. They think about cycling all day, every day. Like they, they, it's their thing become their persona competitively and then you have a massive group of kids who they want to to belong they want to matter and 
you know, the five foot eight, one twenty, you know, rolling up to football practice is not necessarily, you know, unless they have, you know, four three speed is going to do a lot on that football field. And so the inclusion factor of Nike Utah is off the charts, you know? And so when we think about Brainstoke and what, you know, what is going on in the sport in Utah and in general, it attracts a lot of youth who otherwise would not have community, right? right? And so that is very attractive to us. You know, kids who may not necessarily be, you know, the typical ball sport, they may not have a big circle of friends because they're not a typical ball sporter, which in our state, you know, and culture, when you play ball sports, it, you know, it, there's just a different vibe to that. And socially it's more acceptable. Maybe it's more popular or whatever. I, I mean, there's a lot of dynamics that go on there, but there's a lot of kids who don't necessarily have community. And I suspect that that's the case with a lot of individual sports that may be the same on cross country or it may be, you know, whatever. But it just so happens to be that because of our experience, you know, coaching um, in high school, we saw how many kids with not a lot of friends, loners, would come to practice. And because of the emphasis on inclusion, not podium focused, those kids stayed. They found belonging in community, and it became something that was very genuine to them. It wasn't like, well, if I get really huge in the weight room, I may be able to touch the field someday (laughs) type of a thing, you know? And so all of those dynamics has just been why we wanted to, to stay involved in Nike Utah. But, you know, if you read the news, um, every single sport, every activity, every type of team is having mental health challenges, you know? And so, I don't know. It's a long answer to your question, but That's it's, perfect. you know, would we tell anybody's story? hundred percent. Dal, I know Dallin's super stoked on a design design that collaboratively we came up. Usually they give some ideas and we present some, a bunch of stuff and then we whittle down their merchandise. And this year there's a lot of variety of designs. And one of them is the Utah league logo with the tire track, pretty nice little tire track on the top. And then this little curvature underneath that says nobody rides the bench. And I think that's the thing in my experience with Dallin. He's the most proud of like every time I've heard him on your podcast or with the news or whatever. Uh, it's such a big selling point for them. And, it, and as it should be that every kid rides, every kid competes, I wouldn't say races, but competes, you know, they're there and they, you know, they're not pulling kids off the course unless there's like some lightning or whatever. They let them finish and do what they need to. And they provide guides and, you know, uh, supervision and uh, for needs and all these things, but he's he rightfully so is super proud and th- and will have a shirt this year that just says that um, that nobody rides the bench and yeah I rode the east bench this morning and thought oh that'd be kind of a fun shirt like nobody rides the bench except for the bench everybody you know? in the Wasatch <laughs> 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 yeah. um, but it's but I don't think anybody anybody really get it but it's it's a shirt that you know I've been looking at a good portion of the day because we did shirts and hoodies with the same design but it's just a really a, a amazing space and it's it is different for me to think that way because I grew up playing ball sports and I that was me too my, my first love and I was a, a passable athlete in all respects and so I didn't really ride the bench what that feels like but now I gain a perspective of all of these kids that I see and I go to fit parties and I see kids of all shapes and sizes and you can tell you can tell a good chunk of them they're like that kid's struggling you can tell and so I'm going to make an effort to make him comfortable and or her comfortable make sure that they know that everyone's going to look like this and everyone's going to dress like this and you're just going to be part of the crowd the thing that I know you're looking for you know yeah. Um, but that, uh, my sister's in mental health. She's a counselor at a high school and she used to work here occasionally here or there because she just loves what we're doing and I'll take her to events with me. But she came to a uh, fitting for me that was kind of in her neighborhood because I needed some, I needed another set of hands. And she was just blown away at how many kids we could touch on an individual basis uh, emotionally to say, look, it, you look good. Like, this is, you're going to be good. Like, everything fits right. It's the size that's right for you. 
um, and you're going to just be normal and natural and you can see the kid's countenance change when it's like, oh, I'm going to be part of something here, you know. Totally. So it's, it's cool and I, I really commend kind of what you guys are doing. I think it's great to put such an emphasis on, you know, positive affirmation and positive stoke to be part of something that really is can be, I think, the most impactful thing that a kid, especially one struggling with those types of things, could could put themselves into. Yeah, we appreciate that. The culture of it, all you know, holistically um, in Nika right now tends or seems to be that way. You know, I have to commend Dallin. You know, yeah, in what's going on there. You know, if you really think about the state of Utah, seventy five hundred student athletes. You probably have double that in coaches and ride leaders. I don't know that, you know, the, the numbers all in, in terms of the program, but you know, if you really think about it, his, you know, his army background being an officer, you know, who he led in the army, he was uniquely positioned to take this on at this time. It's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, and what's interesting is as competitive and as driven as the army would be. Um, Preston's right. You know, his emphasis is not what's going on on the podium or who's winning. You would kind of think with that background that it would be this kind of alpha accomplishment performance based thing. But in our podcast with him, he was so genuine about his experiences being in the army and he had to review those, you know, situations where, you know, army, um, military people had taken their own lives and that bugged him more than anything, you know? And so his emphasis on inclusion and what you talked about, no one rides the bench. It's awesome that his leadership style and his focus is that because his ability to reach such a significant amount of people, I mean, we're excited and you know what Brainstoke is doing, but in reality, Dallin is doing that top down his team, you know, in a pretty broad way. You know, he commands a significant amount of people. I think their email list is like 40,000. You know, so their capability to touch people in a positive way is just, it's just cool. I, I don't know other sports that are doing it this way, you know, not on this scale. Yeah. So. I think you're right. So um, as we, you know, we try and keep a pretty reasonable time on this, and I feel like everything we've said has been good, so I don't want to uh, potentially squander it by going off topic. So my hope is to give you guys a chance to at the end of our podcast we typically kind of outline a few of the favorites the things that are in our lives right now that we're doing that are fun that are really kind of getting you out of bed in the morning uh so if you don't mind sharing a couple of things that you're just super passionate about right now that's a great question and uh, (laughs) you're gonna think i'm crazy or maybe you're not maybe it maybe it relates to all four of us but i was i was in bed last night so I'm in the – Tom and I are both signed up for Lodija. Tom's never done Lodija. You haven't? But believe it that or not. That surprises me, all the crew up there <laughs> fall into it. That's worse than me not going to Lake Powell. Man. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> yeah, right. Switch, so. switch roles for the weekend. <laughs> so we've got, Tom, yep. si- we've got Tom signed up for Lake – or for Lodija, which is awesome. And I haven't done it in – I think it's been like 13 or 14 years. And – uh, so we've kind of taken this this project on, like, hey, we're going to do this. And <clears throat> we've got two big blocks. This weekend and next weekend, we're going large. You know, we went 70 today. We're going 135 tomorrow. I heard was close. Could you get up Big Mountain, and then did you have to turn around? We just turned around at the top of Big Mountain today because we're going large tomorrow. We're going to do another 130 tomorrow. With the whole group? No, just, 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 the, two just the two of us. <laughs> So you do most of your long rides just together, not with the whole Mountain uh, Green Cycling Club up there. Uh, we'll we'll typically go with like maybe a group of four or five, it depend. But but it all depends. Everyone's got different schedules. But you know, knowing we've got these two big weekends ahead, I was laying in bed last night and I was so anxious to wake up yeah. to ride my bike today. That's good. And yeah, that is good. Like I, knowing what's on the calendar on September 9th and what's ahead of me and how hard that's going to be, I was so anxious. I wanted to ride. So, I mean, in reality. Like stoked? For real. Or like, <laughs> I need a Xanax. No. <laughs> no. And, and I haven't felt that. I mean, I've always, I always look forward to rides, but like I was genuinely ready to go, cool. you know. So I, that's, that's something super. Are you doing it in Mountain Green kits or what are you guys going to wear? Yeah, we're wearing the, the kit you designed ones. or you helped us do. Yeah, I just 
Yeah, the Mountain Green Cycling Club. I may have to rock my JMO Special Edition. <laughs> my son, you know, yeah, created a custom kit. So, That's awesome. no, I don't know. I'm sure we'll go MGCC, but yeah. Want me to answer? Yeah, go for it. What else? I mean, do you want to talk about anything else? Oh. Relationships or no, just bikes. your wife or? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny you bring up uh, Major doing that. I went. It was the first time I ever did Deer Valley last week. And I drove past, and I just thought it was you guys, Mount Green group, just riding. Like, there was a bunch of white kits on the front of some peloton. Oh, oh, and I was yeah. like, oh, must be those guys out here riding. <laughs> I had no idea it was East Canyon last weekend. Yeah. I'm, like, <laughs> kind of out That's of funny. it because of the Nika stuff. It's like a little self – it's, like, really encompassing, and I'm trying to squeeze two weekends of fun before I'm living in my tent <coughs> at, at, a, at a venue. But, yeah, I drove by and just saw four or five white – kits on the front i was like oh it's not right. guys up yeah. here training or johnson elite because there's a bunch of people up there too like they you both kind of have white kits and so i was like oh maybe it's just those guys out for a ride <laughs> driving the pace yeah <laughs> uh, us on the front <laughs> driving nothing not yeah well, i just thought it was a group ride. us like, on the front driving to nelson's frozen custard yeah. or, the masters yeah. b category we probably won't have a lot of <laughs> mountain green white jerseys yeah. on the front so tell, tell me like your so I think <coughs> who's going to be your supporter? My wife. She's she, you know, she's, she's dialed. She's we've I've done it a handful of times. So right. she, we, she knows what cool. she's doing. It. I, my, I supported for my buddy. It was the most stressful thing I ever did. I'd I'd rather ride it ten times than support it once. Like <laughs> well, <laughs> it was so stressful. It is stressful, and she she's made it clear it's stressful. She doesn't enjoy it. Oh, she always is like there are easier ways to go to Jackson Hole. Yeah. Why are we doing it yeah. this way? <laughs> You know? well, I'm sure you guys got like a cool place to stay. Uh, you better make it week the weekend worth it because I yeah <laughs> we, <laughs> we got yelled at the whole time getting up there and <laughs> we weren't doing it right. Where's my gel? I wanted a Red Bull and it's just like get it yourself. I like I'm paying all this gas to drive up here. <laughs> yeah, we do come into those feed zones a little grumpy sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I made him crash. Too. It was hilarious. Like yeah, I was in the wrong spot, and so he thought I was at seven, and I was at twelve or whatever their numbers are. And I was like, well, there was nobody here, so I moved up. <laughs> I he cut somebody off, and they crashed. He was so mad at me. And I was like, brakes. I'm never, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> so, um, I got to get that dialed in the support. Yeah. So I have, I have not done loaded yet. So for years, I was doing roadie stuff when I lived in, you know, Davis County. Did some Ironman stuff. And when we moved to Mountain Green, I, the mountain biking was so good. Yeah. And it was so accessible that I just started riding the majority of the time on the trails. But it's probably really good road riding, too. Like, to, to do what you guys did this morning, it's hard for everybody else. Totally. You know. <clears throat> and we would go. Like, you know, for years, we've been riding Big Mountain and old snow basin road and so we would do road rides but nothing to do you know oh, any yeah. events but yeah. and then you know preston introduced me to p2p and i just fell in love mm -hmm. you know so for five years it was like all in on endurance mountain biking and you know so but this is exciting um to do lodaja to sign up back to community right i would not be doing lodaja without a community of guys who are good dudes yeah. they ride hard we ride only Tuesday nights, get dropped like constantly, but I love them to death. You know, I mean, they're, they're cool and it's fun and it pushes you. And, you know, in my, you know, mid forties, um, being around people who are positive and who are driven, that means everything to me yeah. because there's a lot of people out there I could spend time with who they're just half class full and, you know, I, there's no benefit in it. You know, and so the older you get, you start recognizing who you want to spend your time with. And, you know, what I'm passionate about right now in my life is spending time with positive people. They don't have to be super successful in business or winning races or whatever. I just want to spend time with people who want to be positive and do positive things. So that's why you invited Joseph Lee into your group. <laughs> <laughs> They Joseph was already there, <laughs> you know, I mean, we were late to the party, but so that, that the Lodija to me is really about that. Yeah. I have no like sub nine hour or whatever. I mean, if Preston and I and our buddies rolling in similar time, then, you know, so be it. So, yeah. you know, I'm excited about that. In terms of what gets me out of bed in the morning, I've always been an early riser. I mean, 
mountain bike, trail run, whatever. I want to see, you know, I want to see the sunrise between five and 7 a.m. I'm, that's just how I'm wired, you know? Awesome. So that gets me out of bed and I'm passionate about that. I'm actually, you know, just to share this, you know, for listeners, whoever listens in, when I was young, I ski raced at Snow Basin, little dude. And, um, at 13, I crashed big time in a, in a downhill race and tore my ACL. And it was the beginning of the end of, of my ski <laughs> racing life. But <clears throat> from a young age, my dream, having gone through the Canyon and skied at snow basin forever, I wanted to live in mountain green. And we've been there now for 10 years, but I, my wife and I have been building another home about a mile from where we are. And I have to just say out loud, it is, it's a dream come true to be working on that. It's yeah. taken forever, right? right? 25 years, you know, as an adult, but even longer than that as a kid, you know, for those who are listening in kids or whoever, keep dreaming. Yeah. Like that is what's passion. Your passion is tied to like having a dream and working on it, continuing to work and pursue that, you know, it takes a long time to achieve what you had envisioned when you were young. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you now at 46 working on this, it is so fulfilling. I was just up there today, you know, looking at Snow Basin across the valley, and I just thought, it's all been worth it. It's been a long race yeah. to get here. But, yeah, I get out of bed in the morning thinking about that. Like, I, I'm building a life. It's hard, but I'm building the life that I had envisioned that I wanted. And it's all been worth it. Yeah, congrats. Your current spot's pretty sweet. Seven it is cool. Seven, the new one, I, it is cool. It's awesome. Yeah, thank you. excited about that. Yeah. It's good. Life is good. Yeah. Jo- Joseph Lee's my sister's brother-in-law, if that connection makes sense. I've known him forever, and he's never been unhappy. Every <laughs> time he, I've never seen him unhappy. We did uh, what was Rockwell Relay and Vision Relay and whatever it's uh, adapted to now, but I've done it a few years with him. Yeah. And, oh, my gosh, and he's crazy fast. And at some point in my life, I was fast. But we would be going, and I'd be at a nine effort, you know, like we were just hammering. And he's just like, oh, isn't God great? This, this, can you see <laughs> who, who, who designs rocks like this? This is amazing. And it's like, dude, I can't even breathe, let alone <laughs> yeah. think. And he's just like, yeah, it's amazing to see. And so if I'm ever down, I call Joe to just be like, hey, man, what are you doing? And it's like, oh, I'm better now. Uh, I love it. You know, we've got, a, we've got a group thread, text thread, right, of everyone in Mountain Green that rides a bike. And obviously Joe's on that. Yeah. And everything he says is so positive yeah. and gives, you know, we're all his brothers, yeah. you know, yeah. and he's always just giving us a ton of love. He's yeah. so positive. Yeah. He's a life zealot, yeah. <clears throat> which is awesome, right? I mean, yeah. Again, yeah, he, he the more went, you can spend time with people like that, it just. Yeah. Him and good. I went to the same mission. <clears throat> so when my sister got married, it was like right before I went on my mission. So he was always like way stoked on. <laughs> everything that was going on in England and but he's just like you know it's every time you see him yep but that's cool how's Mitt doing by the way Mitt's awesome he's doing great How much longer here uh he's he's at a year next month oh wow he's been he's on the island of Antigua oh nice so if we don't feel that bad for him no. yeah, no um place. he's in an awesome he's in a good spot there working hard and having fun and yeah. having some success so that's cool yeah, good for him. Kevin, what you got? Uh, just on community with that, the Logan to Jackson thing, I, I've only done it once. I did it on a tandem with a buddy, and it was yeah, like the that. best, worst day on a bike ever. <laughs> you were um, you the front or the back? I was the front. Okay. He had a broken arm, so he couldn't we couldn't He couldn't swap. steer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Our first ride officially on the tandem was from his sister's house that we were staying at in Logan to the start line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my god! It was bad. We, we oh won because we were the only guy on guy tandem, and we were just, I mean, we, we drilled it. But uh, And I always had this, this kind of, I don't know, feeling towards Logan to Jackson because it was like this pinnacle cycling event that – and when people found out you were a cyclist and they're like, oh, have you done Logan Finally, you're going to be a real cyclist. Yeah, you'll right? have completed yeah. Lodages, so you'll <laughs> have gotten a <laughs> real cyclist. Do I get yeah. a Lodage tattoo or yeah. something? Yeah. Like, yeah. What, get what do I do? Yeah. Yeah. You c- now you can tell people you're a cyclist. You can put the white sticker on your car your if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Go up <laughs> tenfold. Yeah, I would, I would always let people down and say, no, I've never done it. And they're like, oh, you're not, you don't really like ride bikes. Whatever. So... Uh, we went into this race, and I was blown away by 
the community that comes out for that race. These, you know, houses in the middle of nowhere, and there's people are just sitting out on the driveway in a lawn chair. Some, you know, every now and then some guy has a hose, and he's like, you know, <laughs> possibly cooling people off <laughs> as you ride by. And I just thought, this is a pretty special race. And uh, despite the the feelings I had towards it before that, I changed my mind, and it's it's pretty cool. I haven't been back since, and I don't necessarily plan to, but. Uh, it, it, it was cool, and the community behind it was awesome. But uh, currently my favorite is uh, the, f- the uh, Forest Service just got done doing some road maintenance to Farmington Canyon, and it's butter. It's really, really good. I rode my gravel bike up there to Wednesday morning, yesterday morning, and it, at going down the canyon, there was a high school team that was up there, and they were all coming down, and I was blowing past these high school kids partly thinking like maybe this isn't the best example but I was on a gravel bike and I was like maybe they'll think wow you know that if, if, if they're not keeping up on a pro. mountain bike like but I just the road I've never seen it so good and it was it's awesome so that's that's my favorite right now it's yeah uh, it's kind of I miss that in fact the cool thing about P2P was that I would hit Farmington Canyon several times Bountiful Side go up and over Double Francis, yeah. you know, we've done a couple times, and yeah, I miss it. So as much as this has been fun to kind of do something new, yeah, I, I miss a lot of those rides, Yeah, you know. Come on down. Yeah, I'd love it. Yeah, yeah let's do it this fall. Okay. Get past this roadie thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, um, I don't remember if I said this last time, this, maybe it's just been my, my two times in a row favorite, but I took – uh, r- my oldest boy up to Powder Mountain we did their downhill and then I did Deer Valley for the first time so now I'm an actual mountain biker because I've ridden yep. Deer Valley but it's just fun to kind of connect on a bike and with no competitive drive at all you know I rode Deer Valley with my neighbor and his nephew who are just getting into it very much like you know no cycling clothes just went in shorts and a t-shirt and they rode and and I had to check myself to be like, don't tell them that that's not right, you know, and that they should be in some Lycra or something, you know, <laughs> just to be comfortable. Um, but it's just been fun to, to ride a bike for fun and when I want to and mostly with my kids. And they're the luckiest kids. They got no idea that they got the nicest bikes that a kid that's mm-hmm. uh, seven and five can have. Um, but it, they do, actually. They take pretty good care of them. But it's, it's fun to just be out on the bike noodling around and, and enjoying it for what it is um, and trying to kind of store up a lot of those memories and the fun because my fall is fun and I'm it's very rewarding for me to go to these races and see these kids succeed um, but it's a lot of time away from my family and um, doing what I want to do on a weekend versus what I've committed to do um, but it, it for me it genuinely is rewarding to be able to go to these events or just ride bikes for just just having fun so that's been my favorite for them for a minute here so sweet that's so awesome. i appreciate you guys making the drive down to old og in here and and spending time in our space it's it's so good to see you guys succeeding in this endeavor because again i i knew about it early i feel like i was trusted with a with an early secret <laughs> um so it's, it's amazing to see. I've loved listening to a few of the episodes of people that I felt like would, would share, you know, fun connection for me. Um, so I hope you guys continue to succeed and wherever we can help you and collaborate with you, it'd be great to, to spread that stoke as much as we can. So right on. So thank you for having us. Thank this you. is yeah. awesome. It's great. And people should come here, by the way, this <laughs> location. <laughs> spot, huh? Yeah. It's super cool. Yeah. yeah. I don't actually want a lot of people here. <laughs> <laughs> And I have to be here too. No, I'm just <laughs> we do have a cool spot here. We get uh, this time of year. We get a lot of people that come in for. We got a lot of the local high school teams: Morgan, Ogden, Weaver, Fremont, Layton, North Davis teams. Whoever else is over on that stack over there, we get a lot of local pickups, so people can save their eight or nine bucks in shipping. And we've got clearance bins here and nice little courtyard for the dogs and for the pool of water that I got back there from a stream and all the things. But it. This is a fun space. We we've we're on a <laughs> different timeline and trajectory of building a forever home in Mountain Green, but this was a big goal of ours to be able to own our own space and have something that was different. That's not just in a big corporate, you know, warehouse that they've made offices out of. This is 
really kind of built for us. Even we bought it, but it's built for us. It works yeah. perfect for what we do, and it's a fun, <coughs> nice, li lively space that's just nice to kind of sit in and be at. So you're welcome to come to our office. Just let us know <laughs> so we can be here too. So no, it's cool. Cool character space. Thank it's you. It's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, and hopefully we'll see you at some of these events and, and cross paths again. Thanks again. Yeah, right on. <laughs>